We are back again. Okay, so some changes. I looked at the picture again and I forgot that there's an angle here on the belt. But no worries. Again, it's always better to have something bigger than what it is because it's easier to shrink it than to enlarge it. Right, so I kind of went ahead here. Now this is just the front piece. Um, as you can see, I did a little dotted line here of how the belt curves in. I also, with some paper, I just, I cut out some, I made like a pattern, like I did a, a pattern. Uh, took me a couple tries because at first I made it too small. And then I just ended up doing it kind of like the, a whole, like eight by 10, you know, those, the printer pages, like a standard uh, printing paper. And I did this. And then I just grabbed like the bottom of, of a tube and I just, I use that to, to make the circle. So I already outlined everything. As you can see here, I mean, move everything. So what, as I was explaining in the first video, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trim this. Well, actually, I'm going to add, ooh, look, see, you caught me again. I'm going to add uh, the half-inch seam allowance because this is going to be the stitch line. And so I'm going to add that, the seam allowance to cut that. Okay, so I'll fix that right now. And then I'll have to cut these out because, remember, once I cut those out, then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it behind that so then you'll see the blue and then like I'll kind of just you know stitch it just to close it up on the, on the edges so that's what I'm going to do with that also do you want to point out the gem belt as well as it curves like this it also has a curve like that but I want to keep it you know at this as rectangular as possible so I have strips of, of leftover of this silver fabric and I'm gonna do fringe and then I'm gonna put it on let's say like a you know I'll make like a bias tape and then I'll stick the fringe to it and then I'll just put it across at a diagonal and all the fringe will be hanging down like that so that's how I plan to do it if you want, there's other ways of doing this belt, but I, I just kind of feel that's that's going to work out for this project, for this person, for this uh, body type. So I'm going to do it that way. Um, I do. I did already also cut out my my lining, which I'm just going to use a purple lining. No one's going to see it, so that'll work. And um, so yeah, I'm, let me go ahead and assemble that. I'll show pictures of the steps as I go. And um, and then I'll show you how to how we're gonna do the back, just in case if you're confused about the overlapping for the closure. But yes, so so keep going. I'll go ahead and do this, fix this, and correct it. So here's just some things so far how I'm doing this. Um, so I, already, I had cut these out as you saw with the stencils that I had made. And then I put the, the blue fabric underneath. I also did some tacky glue just, you know, on the edges of these, these thin parts just to tack it down. Not as a permanent solution, but just as kind of like a temporary thing to hold it so that when I do go over and stitch the edges, they don't move as much. I hope it should work. I've done it before. Also, another tip. What would have been easier if time wasn't an issue right now with this order, if I could just buy really long fringe, which, which they do sell online. You could get very long fringe, very short fringe. But in this case, like I said, because time is an issue, I have to make my own fringe. So what I just did here was I got strips of the leftover silver with my rotary cutter and a straight edge. You know, I just cut a bunch of fringe out of there see I have another piece right here and this is what I'm gonna have on the side of the belt 
not too time consuming, but again, if I had the fringe to buy it, like the opportunity, then I would totally do that. Um, but I, I just need one more strip left. I already did that. I did it in less than two minutes each, um, each piece that I have here. But um, other than that, yeah, that's, that's how I'm doing it. Kind of went ahead here and I did some stuff last night. So as you know, I did put this behind. I pasted it down a little bit just to help. Because again, when you another tip, when you use vinyl or PVC or stuff like that, you don't want to really pin things because pinning leaves holes. The fabric is not like woven. I guess it's like sheets of uh, plastic, I guess. However they make this. I'm not, I don't really think it's woven like cotton but it doesn't heal on its own, so you'll have holes. So I I did some trimming. Um, I don't know if you remember, we had like two identical pieces that were like this, you know, remember? So I cut the back part in half and I sewed it on both sides. Also, of course, this part here was more like a, the rectangle, so I just trimmed it to, to meet that. And then I left, I, I, I blended it back into the original Part because this still has to match with that over here also I uh, just changed it up a bit I I mean I had a lot of leftover this and I was like well I don't want to have to throw this away or keep it in my stockpile so basically um, I, I quickly changed this up this is just what is showing here the right side and this is the wrong side and I just use that as the lining and it's it's actually it feels pretty thick so I'm, I feel pretty good that it won't roll down on itself. I did serge all around just to keep the whole, all the pieces together. And I ended up sewing it like this together. <clears throat> Again, I didn't want to, in, in the end, when I was doing this, I didn't want to have to sew an identical piece like this, you know, and then sew it around and then flip it inside out and poke up. Like, you know, I didn't want to have to do all those extra steps. And, you know, the serger makes everything look nice and neat. So I'm just going to do it like that. So here I am right now. This is what it looks like. <clears throat> With the serger, it did kind of stretch it out a bit. So I'm gonna fold this down and get on my machine. I gotta change out the thread and do some gray. Or maybe I'll even do pink as a pop color. I'll, I'll think about that right now. But I'm gonna top stitch the whole thing down. Oops, sorry, down. And then, um, and then after that, then I'll go ahead and put in my fringe sideways. Okay, so on to the assembly of the sleeves. Uh, just a quick thing, I kind of skipped this part, but when I, you had cut out all the pieces, you know, you just line up shoulder to shoulder on both ones, um, right sides together before you sew it. And then as you can see, I just surged it. It's a quick assemble once you have all your pieces cut out and then you just need to put them together. Um, I already have one sleeve done which is this one right here. I redid them. I kind of tried them on my arm and I think they were a little too tight. So just to be on the safe side, I, I redid them. So when you put on the sleeve, you're gonna wanna, you know, pick it up by the shoulder and find the inside seam. Sorry if it's shaky, I'm doing it with one hand. And then with this seam, you're gonna line it up with this seam and then you're going to pin it and then you're just going to work your way around and pin it and then you go ahead and sew it um, on your machine when you do this if you didn't know this already all machines have this you know sleeve pop out thing um, my machine does this I have another machine which I pop down the back and it, it lowers it so I could do sleeves that's going to be the easiest way for you to do it because um, it obviously will not fit around this area. So just pull this section out before you start if you didn't already know that. So that way you could do your sleeve. And I'm doing it with just a straight stitch on my machine. As you can see here, I have it on a three we'll stitch width, center, all that good stuff. Okay. Okay. So here, uh, just I'm hemming the dress. Uh, like as I said before, I didn't show a video of it, but I'm hoping that you you understand if you're watching this how if you've ever put anything together, you know you line up everything right side together, 
line up the shoulders so the shoulders line up the sides so the sides that part's pretty easy um, I decided to use my old school Spartan for this because it has a lot of really great attachments for the feet um, right now I just finished up I did like the neckline area as you can see here I did the neckline area as you can see here I used a narrow hemmer just to do it really thinly and then for the the bottom of the dress uh, the hem I'm going to use this one that's called a hemmer and I think this this one does obviously a little bit wider if you could see the difference between the roll here and the roll here it, it there's a difference which I wanted the hem to just to be a little bit thicker and these attachments are great I mean it's already it does it you know it like pre measures it for you um, what else it just it, it pre, it pre measures it so you don't have to pin anything you know you just feed it through here and it, and it does it if you don't have any of these attachments I highly recommend it now with my old machine um, mine looks like this and you see how it has like this keyhole thing going horizontally you're also going to need so as you can see here you need a, an attachment to go with this type of foot see how the keyhole is going horizontally there should be, if you have an older machine or something like that, there should be another piece that looks like this. Okay? So what you do is you just put the little hole in there and you slide it across. And this, it also has like a little tab thing. Let me see if I can get this in here. If you can see what I'm doing. So see I put that in there like that. So now I'm just going to attach it to my machine. Yours may be different but if you are using a vintage machine there is that extra piece that you need to attach for your your hammer. And, and, and again with some of these vintage pieces you don't even need this weird attachment. They already come ready to put into the machine. So it's it's weird. It just depends. I have no explanation for that other than it's just one of these weird things. So as you can see here, see this this thing down here? You're gonna have to slip your fabric under, in, or not under, but in between that to get it started. See here? starting to feed it and I do go a little bit backwards because I want to catch you know this edge of it, the fabric now if it's if this is your first time using one of these like for me it, it totally took me a while to get this this motion to try and wrap it around I was very frustrated with these things the first time I used them believe me so don't get pissed off if you can't do it the first time it, it, it does take some practice so see as you can see here let me back it up just the only thing you have to watch out for is when all your strings start getting hung up in the back it's so annoying okay. See? Ah, still strings everywhere. Okay, but you can see what it's doing, right? So once you got that, you got that in there, you can't just like let the machine take it. I do still have to like put my hands in a certain motion. So I'm still kind of like doing this and I'm pulling it from the back to keep it straight. Because I gotta make sure it, it, it feeds it as it's going or else it's just gonna like run off the edge and then and then once it does that again it's just an annoying thing to have to feed that half done raw half done half raw edge back into the the thing so just keep doing that that's a tip if you have one of these definitely use it some last minute things that I do want to talk about this costume because I, I put it together and um, as I did the last time 
the clip before I transitioned to this video, um, I was showing you about the different feet and how to, you know, finish it. And I hemmed it and everything. I did add the, <clears throat> the fringe that I had made by hand using just my straight edge ruler and a rotary cutter to do this out of just strips of fabric. And I connected them as you could see, there's two seams here because I didn't have a piece long enough to do it in one cut. Um, I tacked this down around on the blue parts with blue. I thought the blue would be a nice pop to complement the, the blue metallic on the, the, the starburst thing going on here. Um, what else? Okay, so the when she tried it on, the bust was a little tight, but it, it looked good, right? And also another tip for you. Um, Thank you. So when she tried it on, the the bust was a little, not that it was a little tight, but it was a little low. So I stretched it over and I had marked it with two pins like in a cross because I needed to know exactly where I needed to put my closure. Now the other closures down here, I did Velcro because it's a simple costume, it'll be fine. But for the bust part, since there's a lot of tension there, um, I put a hook and eye, as you can see, it's kind of stitched right here. and then. This up here was a little flopping in too much, so I did add some Velcro, um, a little skinny piece at the top, so that way there's there's good coverage and there's no flopping. Because again, she's doing the, she's wearing this for work, so you want this to be as appropriate and modest as possible. Um, I did, like I said, I put Velcro down here, which is fine. Um, there's Velcro in the back of this uh, belt again, just to make everybody's life so much more easier. Um, what else? <clears throat> what else do I need to mention about this? I love this costume. It looks so good. I hope she likes it. Um, and don't worry about this. You'll be like, Sarah, what's up? Her, this this mannequin cannot get to this woman's waist size. So even here, a tip, even here, like this mannequin's adjustable. So I was able to, to stretch it out to as big as possible. Um, I believe she had a 40... I mean, look at this, 43 bust, but my mannequin's only able to go up to a 40. So what I did was that I put on one of my bras and I stuffed it enough to where it measured the 43 to get that extra three inches. So that's why this looks like it has boobs because it kind of does. <laughs> and that's just kind of a, a cheat because um, not usually, and I'll say this, you can do this, but you have to stretch out your mannequin to as big as possible. You can't have a small mannequin like this with giant boobs coming out towards this way unless the person you're making the costume for is petite and has really big implants or something where that proportion is skewed. In this case, you know, the woman is, is plus size. She has natural breasts. She, it just, I couldn't make the mannequin bigger because it, it doesn't go up to that kind of, to that bigger size. Not that she's big, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so you can get away with putting a bra on top if you've already maxed out your mannequin to give it a few more inches. Now, if it was like a 50, because I only it, I only needed three more inches, so this, this still looks natural. So if I had to make it bigger to like a 50 bust, I would have to put padding on the sides because you can only come out this way so much, you have to widen it at some point to make everything proportional. So that's just a tip there if you have issues fitting and you have a mannequin that doesn't go up to your size. Again, don't worry about that gaping right there. It's just because the waist, I didn't pad it and it, it can't get to as big as her measurements, but the, the waistband does measure to what she she needed. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions, let me know on this video. I know at, at when I started uh, or doing the dress, I kind of just went through it kind of quick, assuming you guys can put together the dress once it's cut and then just sew it at the shoulder and side seams and then add in the sleeves. Um, but yeah, happy Halloween. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.